You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Emily Sue. And I'm Edna Dare. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. MTRC boss Jay Walder's contract will not be renewed next year following Express Rail Link fiasco. Billionaire Kwok Brothers and former Chief Secretary go on trial in Hong Kong's biggest corruption case. Veteran journalist Gao Yu confesses on state television after arrest on charges of leaking state secrets. MTRC Chief Executive Officer Jay Walder will leave his post next year after he was accused of trying to cover up a two-year delay to the express rail link. The MTRC claims Walder's departure was decided last year and has nothing to do with the rail link problems. But lawmakers want him to pay with more than just a resignation. ATV's Raymond Young reports. The MTRC's unpopularity was on display again this morning when protesters mocked the railway firm's top executives as they showed up for their annual general meeting with shareholders. During the session, Chairman Raymond Chen dropped a Let's bombshell. Chief Executive Officer Jay Walder will leave the company after his contract expires in August next year. But both Chen and Walder claimed the decision was made last August and had nothing to do with the trouble DMTRC is in, after announcing a two-year delay to its express rail link to Guangzhou. And I am very, very sorry that we did not do a better job in communicating with everyone about the challenges that, that we have been facing on this project. Um, I, I, I can only apologize for the confusion, the misunderstanding that this has caused in the community. I hear your words. I know that you are disappointed, and, and I think that's understandable. We let you down, and, and, and we accept that. As CEO, I take responsibility for what we do in the corporation, um, and this is, this is no exception. But again, they insisted there was no cover-up. The full extent of the delay was only understood at the most senior level in early April. And so our 2013 annual report prepared earlier this year still referred to a 2015 target. The company's board of directors has set up a panel to investigate the delay, headed by former Commerce Minister Frederick Ma, among other independent non-executive directors. Ma said today the report will be ready by July and assured everyone that it will be objective and comprehensive. The government has also been the target of much criticism as the MTRC's majority shareholder and has set up its own panel to investigate. Transport Secretary Anthony Cheng today refused to confirm or deny rumours that he's stepping down after he was accused of being involved in a cover-up. In my political life, uh, I know there are uh, occasions where one faces uh, uh, huge challenges, paradoxes, and one has to sometimes uh, make hard choices. Uh, over this... Um, particular incident, I have been reflecting on the rights and wrongs of what I've done. Cheng added more directors will be appointed to the MTRC board to monitor its operations, but warns there is a catch. Uh, we have to realize that the MTR Corporation is a listed company, so we have to do things strictly in accordance uh, with the company's ordinance and the articles of association. But lawmakers are still not impressed with former KCLZ boss Michael Chen calling for tougher punishment for Walder. He is getting off scotch free. We realize that it's a huge discrepancy between what he thought could be done and what he's conceding at this point. All right, so that very unprofessional action also needs to be addressed. And I see no way other than a cut in his pay for the remaining part of the term or an early termination of his contract. Walder is on a pay package that nets him $13 million a year. Raymond Yang, ATV News. The biggest corruption trial in Hong Kong's history began today with property tycoon brothers Thomas and Raymond Kwok and former Chief Secretary Rafael Hoy in the dock.
All three, along with two other defendants, pleaded not guilty to bribery and other charges involving $34 million. I was at the High Court this morning when the judge issued a media gag order on the proceedings. Former Chief Secretary Rafael Hoy was the first defendant to arrive at the High Court in Admiralty this morning. He was followed by Raymond Kwok and elder brother Thomas Kwok. The billionaire brothers run Sun Hong Kai Properties, Hong Kong's biggest developer, while Hui was the former number two in government under then chief executive Donald Zung. They're the main defendants in Hong Kong's biggest ever corruption case. The case has sparked worldwide interest and foreign journalists joined their local counterparts to cover the trial. But only 15 journalists and a limited number of people were allowed into the public gallery, forcing scores of reporters to watch a live feed of the proceedings in the lobby. The case began at around 10 a.m., with Justice Andrew McCrae ordering a media gag on the proceedings until further notice. More than two years after the ICAC arrested Rafael Hoy and the Kwok brothers, the biggest corruption trial in Hong Kong's history has begun. It will take 70 days and will be keenly followed as the government takes on some of the city's richest and most powerful men. Hoi is accused of receiving $34 million in bribes and other financial inducements from the two Kwok brothers between 2000 and 2009 in exchange for favorable treatment. Hoi, the Kwoks and two other co-defendants, Sun Hong Kai Executive Director Thomas Chan and former Hong Kong Stock Exchange official Francis Kwan, today denied a total of eight charges against them. Hoi faces all eight, five of which he shares with one of the Kwoks or both. These include conspiracy to offer an advantage to a public servant, misconduct in public office, and furnishing false information. Current and former government figures are among the 82 prosecution witnesses expected to testify. The list includes former Housing and Education Minister Michael Soon, Rita Lau, a former Commerce Chief, and Alice Lau, current Permanent Secretary and Chief Executive Lern Chinying's office. The trial continues tomorrow. ATV has been getting a huge amount of feedback and support from the public. Since we highlighted the Law Society president's recent refusal to answer a question in English at a press conference. While many have attacked Ambrose Lam's attitude, there seems to be a general consensus that the use of English is declining, and Hong Kong cannot be a world city without it. Here's ATV's Yon Delatu. On Monday, ATV News ran this exchange at a Law Society press conference when President Ambrose Lam refused to answer a reporter's question in English. What's the Law Society's opinion on the love your country, love Hong Kong requirement for the C candidates? I already explained it in Cantonese. Yeah, we would Sorry like it in that. English, please. Sorry? We would like it in English, please. I already provide the answer. Thank you. You can translate it into English. We highlighted the incident as an example of how difficult English news gathering has become in Hong Kong these days. Since then, widespread coverage in the Chinese language media and online portals has generated a huge buzz, with thousands of sympathetic people expressing support for ATV. Some of them are prominent politicians and professionals like barrister Audrey Yu and lawmaker Claudia Mo. <laughs> 在星期一晚如果沒記錯 Student activists at a press conference this week made a tongue-in-cheek reference to it when asked to repeat a statement in English. <laughs> the problem extends to the government as well, which is bilingual for all official purposes, but often fails to cater to an English-speaking audience. ATV has tried to highlight this shortcoming among ministers in the past. I'm sure you can translate it. I have to get in there. It's not that long to I have to get in there.
Most people feel that Hong Kong fails to live up to the reputation it projects as Asia's world city because of declining English standards and the general reluctance to use the language in public. But perhaps there's hope in the form of people like Sister Ling, a chicken vendor at the Kowloon City wet market, who through the years has never been afraid to speak in English for the cameras. Today no more chicken, also out. That's food for thought in our world city. Beijing has confirmed that outspoken journalist Gao Yu has been detained on charges of leaking state secrets to foreign contacts. The veteran activist was shown making a confession on state television. Raymond Young reports. After weeks of speculation, state broadcaster CCTV confirmed this morning that Gao Yu has been arrested. The veteran journalist and activist was detained after the police raided her home in Beijing on the 24th of last month and seized substantial evidence. In an unusual move, CCTV blurred the face of the 70-year-old while she was shown making a confession. I believe what I have done touched on legal issues and harmed national interests, the woman said. I made a gross mistake and earnestly wish to learn a lesson by pleading guilty. The official Xinhua News Agency reported that Gao deeply regretted her behavior and is willing to accept punishment. She is facing a charge of leaking state secrets to foreign contacts. It's alleged that in June last year, she illegally obtained a highly confidential document believed to be a Communist Party circular calling on local authorities to crack down on dissidents. Electronic copies of the document were shared with the editors of a foreign website and led to its wide circulation online, a police statement said. The investigation is ongoing. Rice campaigner Hu Jia, who is under house arrest in Beijing, wrote on his Twitter account that activists are trying to find out where Gao is being detained so a lawyer can be sent to fight her case. Protests calling for her release have been held in Hong Kong since late last month after she failed to turn up for an event to commemorate the Tiananmen Square crackdown. Other human rights activists who attended the ceremony were detained after being accused of picking quarrels and provoking trouble. The official line for engaging in anti-government activities. Gao's detention just weeks before the 25th anniversary of Tiananmen is seen by activists as another attempt by Beijing to silence dissent. She has been detained twice before, first in 1989 after writing an article supporting the student-led democracy movement, and in 1993 she was jailed for six years for leaking state secrets. Raymond Yang, ATV News. China is playing down a row with Vietnam over a collision between their boats in disputed waters, insisting it was not a clash. But the U.S. is criticizing Beijing for the latest flare-up in tensions between China and its smaller neighbors. ATV's Ben Work reports. This shaky video shows Chinese boats ramming Vietnamese vessels in a disputed area of the South China Sea near the Paracel Islands, according to Coast Guard officials in Hanoi. The mainland boats were part of a large convoy accompanying an oil rig being moved into the area. Coast Guard Deputy Commander No Nok Tu said when his ships approached the oil rig, the Chinese boats deliberately bashed into them and fired a high-powered water cannon. Two Vietnamese boats were damaged and six crew members injured in Sunday's incident. The Vietnamese Foreign Ministry said it would do everything necessary to settle the dispute peacefully. But the incident has sent ripples of concern across Southeast Asia. This is a major escalation because of the numbers of ships and because military ships are involved, which is not usually the case with China. And it's occurring before an ASEAN meeting in Miramar. So from now until the end of the year when we have summit meetings, Chinese actions are number one on the agenda. They've caused that. And the core states of ASEAN, not just Philippines and Vietnam, are going to be highly concerned because it's not just a, an oil rig, it's the military muscle that goes with it. And every state will feel vulnerable to China. But Beijing today played down the incident, insisting it was not a clash. Vice Foreign Minister Chen Guoping said China and Vietnam could resolve disputes at sea peacefully. Since the U.S. decided on its military pivot to Asia in a move seen as a bid to contain China, former foe Vietnam has become one of America's closest allies in the region. 
Washington slammed Beijing for bullying its smaller neighbors. Uh, given the recent history of tensions in the South China Sea, uh, China's unilateral decision to introduce its oil rig and into these disputed waters is provocative and unhelpful to the maintenance of peace and stability in the region. So we are strongly concerned about dangerous conduct and intimidation by vessels in the disputed area. We call on all parties to conduct themselves in a safe and appropriate manner, exercise restraint, and address competing sovereignty claims peacefully, diplomatically, and in accordance with international law. At the same time, Beijing has slammed the Philippines for detaining 11 fishermen and their boatload of endangered turtles, also in disputed waters near the Spratly Islands. Today, Manila stood by its decision to arrest the men, saying they appear to have been working with some Filipino fishermen and had illegally entered Philippine territory. They were caught transferring from the small boat to the foreign vessel a certain number of uh, endangered species. We have started the, the investigation. So we have to identify first this, these uh, apprehended uh, foreigners and locals and then we will seek the help and participation of the Committee of Illegal uh, Entrance. Beijing is demanding the Philippines hand back the boat and its crew and stop making provocative moves in the South China Sea. Ben O'Rourke, ATV News. Pan-Democrat lawmaker Joseph Lee has pressed a case for civil nomination in face-to-face -face talks with Beijing's top representative in Hong Kong. Other Pan-Democrats have expressed reservations about going to Beijing's liaison office, but Lee said it was no big deal. Joseph Lee walked into Beijing's liaison office in Weston this morning, becoming the first lawmaker to take up director Jiang Xiaoming's offer to hold individual talks on political reform. The mainland's top representative here is following up on the ice-breaking LegCo visit to Shanghai last month. After the one-and-a-half-hour meeting, the health services lawmaker described the atmosphere as friendly and relaxed, but said both he and Jiang stuck firmly to their own positions on constitutional reform. Li said he pushed the pan-democrats' three-track proposal, allowing ordinary voters, political parties and the nominating committee to name candidates for the 2017 chief executive election. And I, I repeatedly uh, emphasized the point that um, to most of the Hong Kong people, well, giving them one vote uh, for that time is not equivalent to a you know, so suffrage. Li said he'd be ready to meet Jiang again. As a pan Democrat, I am the first one well, going into the, 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 this office, well, the so called sensitive place, to uh, hold a meeting. And uh, I guess that might have a kind of symbolic kind of meaning that well, uh, going into this uh, Chinese uh, China relations office is no big deal. It's just an office meeting the officials and illiterate uh, each uh, party's uh, basic position. But civic party lawmaker Kwok Ka Ki disagrees. He earlier rejected an invitation to meet alone with officials from the liaison office, insisting that his colleagues should be included. Kwok also wants an alternative venue. He warned that the civic party will boycott future meetings with Chinese officials if his demands are rejected. Thailand's anti-corruption agency has found former Prime Minister Yin Nak Shinawat guilty of negligence over a disastrous government rice-buying scheme. Under the subsidy scheme, the state paid farmers far above market prices for their rice, which ended up unsold in warehouses. Yin Luck's scheme was widely seen as a way of bribing rice farmers into supporting her government, but they began revolting when they stopped getting paid. The decision comes a day after Yin Luck was thrown out of office for abuse of power by the Constitutional Court. Now to some unusual reports from around the world, starting with a 90-year-old man being jailed in the U.S. for working as a drug mule. The elderly man described his punishment as a death sentence. A court in the U.S. city of Detroit has jailed a 90-year-old man for three years for smuggling cocaine for a Mexican drug cartel. Leo Sharp, a decorated Second World War veteran, carried 1,250 kilos of cocaine into Michigan on half a dozen trips from the southwest U.S. His lawyer said he suffers from dementia and requires 24-hour health monitoring, but prosecutors argued that he was using his age to avoid punishment. Sharp said his conviction was a death sentence. 
The world's first marijuana vending machine has started operating in Vancouver, Canada. The machine, which only accepts cash, holds various types of the drug in different amounts and half an ounce costs 46 US dollars. The machine has been installed at the British Columbia Pain Society, which offers medical pot packaged in tamper-proof sealed bags. But it requires users to have a card that authorities only give out after reviewing a doctor's form that says they need marijuana. Local media reports said the machine's appearance was welcomed and feedback incredible. Vancouver police say they won't target the city's many pot dispensaries as long as they're only selling marijuana to people with medical permits. New York's famous Times Square has played host to an unusual sporting event with some of the world's best wrestlers going head to head. The highlight was the match between reigning American Olympic champion Jordan Burroughs and Russia's Atsimov Senekov. Their clash drew comparisons to the ongoing showdown between the US and Russia over the Ukraine crisis, but the athletes distanced themselves from politics. Yeah, I don't think there's any political turmoil when, amongst us. We're all wrestlers, so it's in the spirit of the event, spirit of the wrestling games. US President Barack Obama and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin won't